This week on Two Bears, One Cave. Do I look good? It's really good. It's a good look. And then yeah. if I was real gangster? I'm glad I came here. Do you ever have sex with someone with a disability? <laughs> I've been trying just... to promote a TV show here. Oh. <laughs> have we even mentioned the TV show? 100%. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is brought to you by Sattva. Go to Sattva, S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash the shit and get $200 off any mattress of your choice. That's right. You get 200 smackaroos off any mattress that you choose. Pick whatever you like. Pick a firm mattress. Pick a memory foam mattress. Pick a mattress that vibrates and sits up and down for you. Do whatever you want. Just sleep better and sleep harder and sleep longer and sleep more comfortably because you're sleeping on a higher quality mattress, like a mattress from Sattva. Throw out your trash mattress and get award-winning customer support, environmentally friendly, awesome mattresses from Sattva. It's the mattress I sleep on. S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash the shit. Ladies and gentlemen, two bears, one cave. And finally, we have someone who can prove his ethnic background. Me? Tom, yeah, Tom says he's Latino, oh. but like, oh. have you ever, you've been around that, <laughs> yes. that colonizer? Yes, okay. The only, he's it. Latino in the same way that Christopher Columbus was an Inca. Like, he, like his dad colonized Peru, met his mom. I think right. that's how it worked. Right, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that much closer. I maybe probably just look closer. You look a lot more ethnic than Tom. Yes, yes, for sure. He's so excited. He wanted to be here. I called him. I said, yo, Saifa, as a guest bear, and he's like, fuck yes. He's not gonna be here. No, he's not. I thought two bears was you and him. I know. Well, you're a guest bear. Oh, I'll be a guest bear. Yeah, you're a guest bear. Okay. So, so yeah. Got so it. you're filling in for Tom. Thank God. Right. I don't speak Spanish though. No, oh, he speaks Spanish. I know. That's what I'm saying. Wait, how do you not speak Spanish? How much do you time? Just willfully not learn it. How much time do you have? Wait, does your mom speak Spanish? My mom is not the Puerto Rican one. My dad was. Wait, what was your mom? Well, my mom is half Puerto Rican, half Irish, but didn't know her dad. You got it? Hang on, wait, wait, wait. Half Puerto Rican, half Irish, didn't know her dad. Right. Her dad was Puerto Rican. Yes. Okay. So oh, he, that was horrible. Yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> I was like, he's the one. Okay, yeah. yeah. He the Irish guy sticks around. But An the, Irish guy doesn't leave a Puerto Rican chick. You can't. Never. Never. Can't, no. That's the, that, okay, keep going, keep going. Write down the most perfect, beautiful children. What do you think the perfect mashup is? Because Irish, Irish doesn't come with a lot of great characteristics i'm irish yeah but sometimes you throw in those green eyes oh, so if you yeah. go ethnic if you're irish and you go super ethnic for the other person they'll get like the brown skin and might get the green eyes then it's like That's, whoa right did you know any of those dudes growing up yeah there's a lot in the bronx there's a lot of puerto rican irish mix really yeah it's like a thing yeah wow they should have a name for that like, like all i have six red-headed girl cousins they all look they are white girls with red hair with the ghettoest Puerto Rican accents. For real? <laughs> yes. That's fucking It's it's mind boggling. Do you think what do you think? Do you think accents are do you think accents are nature or nurture? Meaning, do you think you have more of a Bronx like I listened to this dude try to fight a pro tennis player at the US Open. Did you see this? A black dude from from Long Island. Yes. And I could sense a black Long Island accent. Yes, yes, yes. And, you I know saw what I mean? Yeah. You saw, did you, you, could you catch yeah. the, it's yeah. like a Mets accent he in said, him? He uh, said, he goes, uh, I forget the exact line, but he's like, yo, we, we, this New York, bro. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, I know that. I've said that. <laughs> yeah. I say that. And, he, and then he fucking slammed him from being from Serbia. Yeah, yo, like, that's oh, what he said. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. goes, yo, this is New York, yo, not Serbia. I was like, <laughs> wow. How did he, he's intelligent enough to know, or he knows the guy, that he's Serbian. He's, he's had a tennis match. Like, well, here's what's beautiful about that is like, I read the comments, horrifically inappropriate. Yeah, of course. As if, as if he's just, as if he's a black dude who rolled off the N and R onto, right. in, in, into, I don't even know what, what lines connect to, we just played there. Yeah, we were just no, at Forest Hills. At the stadium, But yeah. as, is, as if, He's a black guy at a, at the U.S. Open. Right. He clearly likes tennis. Yeah, he wasn't working there, right? He's yeah. just a fan. He's a fan of and tennis. And he was, he was mad. The fight was that the guy was... Asked him to shut the fuck up. Right. Because he's from Serbia. Yeah, Respectfully, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's from Serbia, and he doesn't know how black people <laughs> cheer. Black people <laughs> celebrate. Dude, I saw one of the coolest things on Hard Knocks. On Hard Knocks, they brought a magician into... 
uh, the Jets training camp. <laughs> Shut the fuck Wait, up. Wait, black people watching Magic? Oh, just Google that. It's the best. It's it's better. It might, like, black people excel at, at, in certain aspects of life all over the place. But watching Magic yeah, it's, is number one. Yeah, it's phenomenal. They, it's they, phenomenal. they do not play basketball as well as they watch Magic. <laughs> But here's the thing. I, I don't know how we got into this, but fuck it. <laughs> there was I was at an event once and there was a there was two black ladies next to me. And they were agreeing with what was being said on stage. And the woman behind in front turns around and goes, Can you please stop talking? And they both got confused. They were like, We're not talking. Because that's why they say black people talk in the movie theater. Yeah. That's not talking. It's reacting. Yeah. But it's verbal. And people that don't know that don't get it. So they won't even you won't even think you're talking because you were just like, I'll I was just agreeing. Yeah. But their agreement is is verbal. Yeah. I study this stuff. Wait, so wait, did you grow up you did you grow up in a diverse neighborhood? Oh yeah. 100%, really? Yeah. Like how like what's the Bronx like? The Bronx is that's uh, bro, I grew up I'm Puerto Rican. But only because in New York you have to be something, right? Yeah. We're all New Yorkers. Okay, here's the questions you ask in New York when you meet somebody. You say, what's your name? Yeah. Where are you from means where are you from in New York? And what are you? Okay. What are you? And if you ask me what are you, I say Puerto Rican, Court Irish. That's what I am. <laughs> Everybody's something. The neighbor over here is Trinidadian. Jamaican upstairs, Jewish lady downstairs, Chinese lady next door, Guyanese across the hall. Nobody, the only difference is, is because we like each other's food is why we know <laughs> that you're something different. Yeah. But we're just all New Yorkers. I heard when I first moved to New York, I heard uh, I heard some dude, some dude I, I wish I could give the guy credit, but a New Yorker <laughs> yeah. make a joke that I did not understand the punchline <laughs> of, but I still laughed. He goes, what's the difference between... <laughs> A Puerto Rican and a Dominican. Yeah. And he goes, Dominicans wear socks with their sandals. And I started laughing and I was, I'd never met yeah. a Dominican. And I never, I didn't know what, the, and we didn't even have Puerto Ricans in Florida. Right. We just had Cubans. Yeah. We no, had but, Cubans. But, yeah. Now there's Puerto Ricans in Florida and Orlando. Oh. Now they run. <laughs> <laughs> Orlando's the Bronx. I used to make a joke about. I, I knew so little about diversity that you just like because you had to. If you were a white guy going up in New York and you didn't know anything about anything, you were you were fucking hung out to dry, yeah, especially at the Boston Comedy sure. Club. Uh, so 100%. I would I, I would make a joke about like how did Puerto Ricans get to New York? Like, because it is curious that like New York's where every all the Puerto Ricans landed. Like, it makes sense why Mexicans are in Texas and California, yeah. and Cubans are in Tampa or in Florida. Yeah. But like, how did that? get all the way to New York. That's why I used to make a joke like, was it? they just got keep going, keep going. And, and uh, I'm fucking. That's a very Mexican accent. I know, I know, I know. I, I can't do a Puerto Rican accent. <laughs> there not really is one anymore. No. Puerto oh. Rican accent is just a New York accent. Nah, well, but Puerto they, Rican chicks have great. I've never fucked a Puerto yeah. Rican chick. Oh, you gotta. You get the eye pops. What's that? The eye pops? What's that? Eye poppy. Oh. <laughs> they got eye pop? No, I've never oh, gotten an eye yeah, pop. It'll make you a man. I've gotten the eye hops. That's when you fuck a fat white chick. <laughs> we love, should go to eye hop I after this, poppy. Eye pop, eye hop. <laughs> yeah, so you got to be something in New York. But I don't speak Spanish. I have no ties to the island of Puerto Rico. Have you like, ever been? I've been there. Yeah. I went there twice, three times. Just regular vacation, one time to meet all my dad's family, because he died when I was young. He died when I was three. So I met all my he died dad's when family. He was three. Three, yeah. Like with like just heart attack or No, he died. He drowned. Yeah. Apparently he drowned. This is sad. My dad died on Dave Chappelle's birthday. So every year I say, Happy birthday, Dave. You know this is the day my dad died. <laughs> <laughs> he went fishing and the boat <laughs> fell over and he lost his glasses. And he couldn't. He was like legally blind almost. But he he went fishing and the boat fell over. Like the, the boat tipped over. And he lost his glasses. Yeah, and, and couldn't. And it just died. Like he was swimming oh, for whatever. Didn't know where to. You know what I mean? Oh, that's so yeah, fucking it's sad. horrible. It's sad. Yeah, but it's all right. It's fine. I didn't Wait, know how, and how he was young. Yeah, he had to be twenty two, maybe something like that. Wait, he was twenty two. Yeah, he had you when he was eighteen. Yeah, my mom was only fifteen or sixteen. For real? Yeah. <laughs> My mom's young. My mom's like my big ass sister. 
<laughs> She's annoying. <laughs> oh, my real sister yeah. told me to give you this. I understand how much stuff you probably have around here. Nope. This will, my, this will live here forever. Okay, my this sister will live here forever. can't stop laughing at your Kool-Aid clip. And it, I know, you know how many rappers and people I know? My sister never gave a shit. Really? She was like, you know Burt Kreischer? All right, so, this has so a home it, forever yeah. on this set. Okay. We got it. Done. Thanks to Kathy Rico. Kathy Rico? Different father. Different father. Yeah, because mine, mine died. Oh, that, oh, yeah, that would be. Yeah. Do you have any uh, biological brothers and sisters? She's, what do you no, mean? no, no. I meant like from same dad, same mom. No. No? No. Just you? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you remember your dad at all? Cool. Like, I have like four strong memories, but not, it's very. Very. Very foggy. So wait, so I'm curious. I know that Tom, I know that Tom is a legit fan of yours. And I think everyone's a fan now that you're doing stand up. Yeah. But like I'm always curious about your past life yeah, as of like you're you're I I'll say I'll say hip hop royalty, but like I've seen you I've you you've worked with everyone. Yeah. With hip hop? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, like how I got started and Like, shit. I'm curious about that path. I, and then I'm curious about how you got in the same Because I only know you as a... St I told you the first time I met you, and we were on the Joker's Cruise. Practical Joker's Cruise, yeah. And I was like, someone's got to tell him he's using his someone else's name. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> and they're like, what? I go, there's like a DJ named Cypher Sounds, and it's... I'm telling you, it's gonna catch him. It's gonna, yeah. And, Who would pick that name? It's and everyone's like, "That's him." And I went, "Wait, he's he's doing stand up." And they're yeah. like, "Yeah." I go, "Yeah, but he's funny." And they're like, "It's the same guy." Thank and I went, God. "Shut the fuck up." Yeah. It's, it's so many people have tried it. Ti Ti's tried it. I don't yeah. know if Ti's still doing it. I don't know. I saw him the other day. I didn't ask him because you know when you don't want to ask someone if yeah. uh, how the bomb went. You know. I but I, Ti is just so slick. It's hard for a guy that cool to like. His relatability, like the, you know, no, I'm not saying you have to be a loser to do stand up. You mm. can have hot takes. Like, there's cool dudes, like Rogan's a cool dude who yeah. does stand up. Like, Burr's a cool dude who does stand up. Mm -hmm. Like, they're like, and they're like cool stand ups, you know? Like, they're like, they're not the fool ever, no. you know? And I'm not saying you have to be the fool. There's cool guys, but like, TI's, like, his life experience are, are so isolated. Yeah. Like, he's like, you ever get pulled over with a bunch of machine guns in your car? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. No, he's like Cleveland <laughs> right and you're like I don't <laughs> <laughs> you ever have Kodak Black go after your son <laughs> Kodak Black went after his fucking yeah, that's son that's crazy do you know so Kodak Black? No. He's he's wild. You know Kodak Black? No. Oh, oh. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, he's Florida, right? Yeah, I would. I think I'd get along with Kodak Black. I bet you you would. I feel like every Florida rapper I get along with really well. I ran into Uncle 100%. Luke one night. And fucking lost my shit. I was I was eating dinner with Gloria Stefan's husband. Love it, and, Emilio. Yeah, and we were having uh, we were having uh, uh, what's the what's the Latin uh, Latino dish with all the seafood? Uh, paella. paella. We're having paella, yeah. and Uncle Luke walked by, and I was and I was like. Uncle Luke, and he was like, "What's up?" and came over, and I was like, "Dude!" And then he was, I'm with Stefan, so he's like, "Oh, hey!" So yeah, he thought yeah, I was yeah. someone, but right, uh, right. but yeah, I, I, Trick Daddy, me and him hung out. Yeah, we get along so 100%. well. Hundred percent. Like, there's something about Florida rappers that like Flo Rida. Even like, Khaled, you ever hung out with Khaled? No, I haven't. But I think we'd. I love to play golf with him. You would one hundred percent vibe. Khaled. Khaled was was. So like there was a guy named DJ Laz out of Tan mm -hmm. out of Miami, Miami that I yeah. knew, mm -hmm. and then Khaled was the same way. They were like just DJs in yeah. in in the scene, but were making beats too. Yeah, is that what you were doing? Yeah, I sucked. Up. My beats sucked. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, all I wanted to do was make beats, and they were terrible. Really? I had to find another angle. So wait, how old were you when you started? Like, what got you? Like, you, so, are you ingratiated into hip hop because you grow up in the Bronx? No. No, not at all. Because I left the Bronx when I was fifteen. My mom moved to Long Island. Okay. So that's how that's why I was able to do fully loaded because I could speak white to the to the audience. Um. <laughs> we are supported by Black Buffalo Zero. If you're twenty one and older and chew or dip like me, check out award winning tobacco alternative Black Buffalo Zero. It is everything you love about dip and nothing you don't. No comp no compromise. They got long cut pouches, all made from edible green leaves. Food grade ingredients. Black Buffalo comes in all our favorite flavors like wintergreen, mint, straight, peach. They even have blood orange. It's the ritual for me. Opening it up, smelling it, running your thumb around the bottom of the cap, 
popping it open with your f three fingers, with your nails, and then smelling it. Putting in your lip. Have the flavor. Oh, my God. I want to dip right now. Black Buffalo sells their products online and ships directly to your front door at blackbuffalo.com. You can use our promo code, Two Bears, for 15% off your first order. Black Buffalo also sells their products in thousands of retailers across the United States. Check out their store locator to find a location near you. We were driving the other night, and we found that we had some at AM, PM. So we stopped at an AM, PM. Honor your rituals with Black Buffalo. One last time. That's 15% off your first order with code 2BEARS at blackbuffalo.com. Black Buffalo Zero products are intended for adults age 21 and older who are consumers of nicotine or tobacco. So when I moved to Long Island, hip-hop was just around me in the Bronx. And then when I moved to Long Island, I had to go find it. And that's what, how I started my journey. So I just... Weird to find it in Long Island. It wasn't just playing everywhere. You walk out of my building in the Bronx, it's just hip-hop, hip-hop, hip-hop. Everyone had the latest albums, cassettes, yeah. boom boxes. Then I moved to the suburbs. Not that they didn't like it, but it wasn't just blasting. It was the of, Beastie Boys. What year is this? No, nah, they, they liked, like, it's 90... Two. Wait, how old are you? You're young? 47. Oh, yeah, you were the same age, yeah. 92, yeah, so it oh, was, uh, yeah, that was 90. Um, like, white kids liked hip-hop. I was in college then. Yeah. I was in college in 91. It wasn't just, like, so like, uh, like white boy rap. Like, they like, liked all of I wish I was a little bit taller. Yeah, I wish I was a baller. I don't like that. Like that. Girl who looked good, <laughs> I would call her. I wish I had a <laughs> rabbit and a hat with a, hat, a six four and Paula. Yeah, that but, song is a good song. yeah. Yeah. What's your point? No, it's just it's like okay. it didn't get the love that it deserved, and in, in like it it, became, it was like a MTV song. Yeah, it was a good song. Yeah, but it's a it's a corny little poppy. Yeah, but song. it's still a really good song. It's good to play in a in a bar while you're drinking. Yeah, well, it's not a grimy hip hop. You can't like banger. Patrice O'Neill used to have a a bit about songs you can bump to. Right. And he was like, I can't, I love. I'm doing Patrice's bit. So it's not my bit, but it, I, it's, I don't know if he ever did it somewhere. But he's like, I love the Beatles, but it's really hard to sit in my truck with the windows down, <laughs> leaned over going, we all live in a yellow submarine. What's right. up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so, There's time and place. Yeah. Time so, and place. So, you, so what hip hop did you, where was your, what was the first thing you remember going like, oh yeah, that's my shit? Peter Piper, Run DMC, Peter Piper. You know what I mean? Run DMC. Run DMC and LL Cool J were my two like. Whoop. Yeah, what's happening here? Oh, yeah, dude. I remember it's I didn't energy. even know Aerosmith was a band. Really? I didn't. I never heard of Aerosmith, obviously, but I'd heard of Walk, Walk this, this way. way. Yeah, and I made my mom go get that album. Yeah, in Carrollwood, and we got it, and I listened to it. I had a boombox. I got the tape. I had a boombox in my back in the way back of the station wagon. And I listened to it, and that whole album was like, that's is that phenomenal. Mary, Mary, yeah. why? It's tricky. Yeah. It's tr yeah. Yeah, Dude, it's that true. was such that a album great. Was, album is phenomenal. 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 That's phenomenal. crazy. That, and uh, and I remember we went to the beach, St. Petersburg Beach for the weekend. Oh, yeah. And I got. You got a little money that weekend. Um, you know, if you grew up in Florida, everyone ended up at the beach. <laughs> Someone had a timeshare that you were borrowing. <laughs> and I listened to LL Cool J. The the radio one? I, 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 I'm bad. Dump, oh, bad. Dump, yeah, dump, yeah, yeah. dump, 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 yeah, dump. It's fire. Oh. Fire. I mean, really, what? Like, I'm going to say this and you correct me. LL Cool J didn't like put out a ton of shit. But for the little he did, he cemented himself in hip hop history. No, he's the he he was signed when he was like sixteen years old. Yeah, he was seventeen when he did that album, right? Yeah, he was super young. And then and then and then you got Mama said knock you out and uh, the but LL Marie. had everything. LL had dope beats, yeah, dope rhymes, look good, yeah. great stage performance. You know, usually you can get two or three of the five. Yeah, you know, you're lucky if you get great music, but your stage performance is eh. He had everything. He did. He learned from the best. So he implemented all of it, and like, and then he, and then he had the body. God. Come on, man, what are we doing? What's his government name? Todd Sh Todd Shaw. Todd. I thought it was Todd Smith. Todd Smith. Who's Todd yeah. Shaw? Oh, that's too short. <laughs> Todd's too short. Yeah. 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 yeah I yeah, love yeah. government names. Yeah. You what? know what Method Man's is? Is it Clarence or something? Clifford. <laughs> Clifford. Yeah. That's Ti's name too. <laughs> Who? Clifford. Ti. Are you serious? Oh, that's Cl right. It is. It is. It is. Uh, Dmx. Dmx is Earl. Earl. 
Uh, uh, Snoop is Calvin. Calvin. I, I Snoop called me one day. Yeah. Or I called Snoop one day. I go, Snoop. He didn't say anything. He answered. I go, Snoop. I go, Calvin. He goes, who's this? <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, Dr. Dre is Andre, right? Andre Young. Yeah. Uh, big Boy is. Uh, I don't know Big Boys. I do. I don't know Big Boy's name. Big Boy is. Is that Sir Lucius Left Foot? No, it's not. And it's not. It's you not sure? Daddy Fat Sax. <laughs> Daddy Fat Sax. Daddy Fat Sax. I said. I told him one time I was a fan. I, I did a show with him, and I was. I go. I'm a fan. I'm like a huge fan. Yeah. He's like, okay. Yeah, I bet he hears that a lot. Yeah. So here's the thing: is like, when it comes to meeting people, you always are the biggest fan that that you, they've ever gotten. So I'm sh I'm certain he's heard a lot. And then the next day we're at the airport, and I went, Daddy Fat Sacks. And I saw him again, and he goes, oh, you really are a fan. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And then the internet corrected me and said, it's not Daddy Fat Sacks, it's Daddy Fat Stacks. And I went, I panicked. And I was no. like, and it's Daddy Fat Sacks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, people Antoine like? Antoine Andre Patton. Antoine Andre. Yes, I did Antoine, actually know that. Antoine yes. Patton. Yeah. Antoine Patton. <laughs> I could, man, I would love to have been able to deliver what hip hop delivers spiritually to a person. I think you do. I don't think I do. I think you do. I think you do. I'm not saying all comedians, but Bert, you touch people in a different way. Thank you. I think you do. What, um, bro, a lot of people that come to your shows aren't necessarily. Hardcore comedy fans, really? A lot of them are. I think you know what's so funny is that's still on. <laughs> okay, how do we turn that off? Are you using that for making sushi? Oh, that's, no, no, <laughs> for loading cars. Uh, yeah, I get, I, I get a weird crossover of like, I like sometimes I'll say to people, "Who do you like?" and then they'll name people that were on that show, and they're like, "Oh, my favorite's uh, Sh Shane Gillis." I go, "Who else do you know?" and they're like, "Yeah." Do. And I go, you just know me and Shane Gillis? And they're like, Mark Norman. I go, he was on the show too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you do touch people in a way you don't realize. Really? Yeah. Well, thank you. Because you have this thing about you with like, uh, whatever, comedy shows, all that shit is a given. That's all we all do, right? We're yeah. all trying to get up on stage. But you tapped into something that's, I don't think, ever been touched before. Oh, take that Maybe like you. a, I don't know. Maybe Di Andrew Dice Clay or something, or oh, these are great compliments. You know what I mean, yeah, isolate they, these and put them in my fucking. Well, you probably funeral. don't realize it because you're living every day. You don't look at yourself. I do not. I do. I'm not very introspective. Yeah, because I live a very unexamined life at times. Yeah, and I I get it because this is what people tell me, and I'm like, what do you? I don't give a fuck any about that. It's yeah. not real. And they're like, Cipher, you were on at a time. When hip hop was crossing over into the mainstream, and you provided a lot of all that shit, I'm like, I'm just trying to work. You know what I mean? So wait, tell me about that journey then. So let's, because I, I keep, I said to Tom, I said, I, I said, I text, I said, because we always text if we can have someone on. Yeah. And uh, he's like, fuck yeah, and he oh, was like, oh, I wish I could be there. So I fucking love that guy. He's like, you have to talk about hip hop though. Yeah. And I was like, oh, because Tom and I are both equally obsessed with hip hop, but Tom knows more. Yeah, he knows more in a different genre too, like whereas I think I know older stuff. Yeah. Like I was talking to, um, I was talking to, I was talking to some people at the Blue Note when I did Chappelle's thing up there, mm. and uh, I just went and visited. I didn't do anything with Chappelle, but like, and they were like, "What's your first hip hop memory?" And I said, "Mantronics," and they're like, "Well, I did well, not expect to hear that from yeah. you." And I was like, "Yeah, that was my first hip hop it was a song called baseline uh -huh. and i was like that and then and then obviously like nucleus and and uh and uh jam on it yeah. jam on it i said jam j -j -j jam <laughs> on it and yeah. then they were like oh so you, wait you and i was like well i'm old enough to be at the beginning of hip hop like yeah. roxanne Shante, i ran into her she was doing a sway show one time at yeah. sirius xm and i was blown away that roxanne Shante, a, a little girl i had listened to as a little boy yeah. Was and she was so badass, and I fucking flashed her. I ripped my shirt off, pressed my tits against the window, and was like, "I'm famous." <laughs> I was fucking what? yeah. That's, I was my go. I don't know. I wasn't even famous at the time. <laughs> but like those that, and I don't think Tom knows as much of those older ones. He was a child, but he's like, like he knows every uh, 
uh, Big Daddy Kane song. He knows yeah, every he's definitely late 80s, rock 90s, him. Right? Yeah. Like he's that's him. Did Eric B pass away? No. Okay. What? I just uh-huh. saw Eric B. Oh, I was just wondering. Did like recently? Well, like I just today? saw I saw Rock Kim and, and DJ Jazzy Jeff, and I was like, why wasn't Eric B there? No, nah, he don't. They don't really work together like that. Oh, for real? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I find hip hop. I'm in Long Island. I say, okay, this is what I want to do. I start DJing. I'm like, I start rapping. Terrible. Like how bad? Give me a good. Give me a freestyle. I don't remember like? like that. Do you remember any of your? No, there was nothing there. Nothing. N- really? So I was like, my name's Bert, and I like to squirt. Yeah, I don't exactly. wear a shirt. So I was like, okay, that's that. To me, that feels like a God-given talent. How can I get a skill? So I'm thinking like DJing is like. You really put that much thought into yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. Because I was like, if this seems like something, if you practice enough, you'll get good, like playing a guitar. I'm and do you think, it. do you think like really great, uh, like someone like Snoop, do you think that's just a God given talent? Yes. Okay. That's yes. interesting. I'm not saying you can't get good at it, but Snoop is effortless. Yeah. Snoop just Nas is that. pretty fucking good. Yeah. These are, this is like, I've never seen Nas. Stress out about writing a rhyme and it just flows. You know what I'm saying? Biggie, the ultimate, where he never even wrote stuff down. Like really? Well, he did in the beginning, but he learned like Jay Z. They don't write stuff down; it just comes through them. That's crazy. But there's also people that sit and focus and write songs. They're not. It's not less talent. Yeah. It's just not. It feels like natural. If yeah, I would be. Eminem's a write it down guy, right? I mean, I'm sure he writes, but he's also one of the greatest. Like, he's, yeah. that's f- coming from somewhere else, bro. He really is pretty fucking good. No, Eminem is incredible. Yeah, incredible. I wonder what he's like as a human. Like, I wonder if he's like cool to be around. He's very. Have you like, met him? Yeah. Oh, for real? To, yeah, I used to. I started Shay Forty Five, the the morning show. Oh, really? He's like super laid back, kind of weird. You got to know what to talk about with him or nothing happens. Really? Yeah. Like what do you uh, like uh you got to talk about you got to talk about the greatest rappers. Oh, that's all he gives a fuck about. That's where that's where you'll get the the spark. Really? Yeah, cuz he loves like like he loves Tretch from Naughty by Nature. I dude, I I saw yeah. Tretch. I saw Tretch at the Bag It In one time. Yeah. With on Sunday nights a uh, talent and who was it? Talent and someone else would do uh, would do like Urban Night at the yeah. Boston Comedy Club, and I saw Tretch. I was I was there just hanging out as a comic, yeah. like just sitting in the back mm-hmm. watching. Dude, the, some of the most insane sets I've ever seen in my entire fucking yeah, I heard life. About that. And I saw Tretch down at the Bag It In, and there was and if I'm not mistaken, I'm just saying this because I don't know. There were shots fired that night of the bag it in. And right. I was like, I was like, oh fucking naughty by nature's here. <laughs> <laughs> Tretch is is Tretch is is Tretch as good as Eminem thinks? Yes. Really? Tretch when Tretch first came out, he was doing things that no other rapper was doing. It was going above people's heads. And not Eminem's heads though. Eminem studies that shit. Really? Yeah. Like Rhyme patterns, flows, the amount of words you fit in a bar, like all that shit. Really? Yeah, but the thing is, Tretch and Naughty by Nature also had hits. So you might not have been super captivated by the ill rhyme structure. They also had great hooks, great beats. You down with OPP? Yeah, yeah like, you know yeah, me. Everybody can sing that, but he was saying some shit in there. Really? Yeah. Fuck, man. See, that's the kind of shit I sleep on. Yeah. It's like when like Tom knows about cars. I don't understand anything about cars, but I liked one car and I liked the other one. And he goes, you like the way it sounded? And I went, yeah. Uh. And it was like, yeah, you can get those different. You can get a, an accessory to put on it, the one you want. It'll make it sound like that. But what you really love is that engine makes it right. sound like And I went. Yeah, how the fuck do you know I that? was like, I didn't I didn't even realize that was what I liked. Right. Um, they could break it down. Okay, so Eminem. So so let's go back to you. So, so, then, so, got, so you decide, all right, if I can skill set this, yeah. then I got to weigh in. Right. So then from there, I went to a college radio station with my boys, some rapper kids, whatever. Went to this college radio station called BAU. They go up there. Stretch and, uh, and no, Bobo? No, not even that. It was, um, Do you remember Stretch and Bobo? Stretch and Bobito. Bobito, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen them on documentaries. Bobo! I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Stretch and Bobito. They're Stretch like on Bobito. every hip hop documentary. Stretch and Bobito is amazing. Really? Yes. <laughs> so this was like a, they had, they were on a college radio station too. Yeah. 
This is the station Chuck D and Flavor Flavor are on. It's called WBAU in Long Island. Oh. It's where, like, if you watch the early Public Enemy video, they shoot it in that radio station. Really? Yeah, they were, like, on the radio first. Chuck was on the radio. I just saw Talk a documentary shit. about this. About Chuck? About, about, about hip-hop. I forget which one I watched. I yeah. watched a, oh, it was about, uh, oh, fuck. Biz? No, oh. it, my wife and I started watching it, and oh, it was a, uh, and they were talking about this. Keep going. I'm yeah. sorry. They were, my wife and I started watching about great DJs, maybe or something, or something. I, I forget what it was about. It was about beat. It was about DJs. It was about beats. Pull up a documentary on. It's got to be on HBO or Amazon, or it wasn't Netflix. And it, they were talking about. Uh, oh fuck, who who did it? DJ Red Alert was on it. Mm -hmm. um, was it the one about mixtapes? It was mixtapes. Oh, mixtapes. Yeah. yeah. That just came out. I, we, I, we just started watching the beginning yeah. of it. Yeah. It's on Paramount. On Paramount. Yeah. Mixtapes. Yeah, keep going. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Please. No. Um, so I went up there, and I saw the guy who ran the show had to keep running downstairs, keep running downstairs to open the door for people. And then he was answering his phone. So I just go, hey, do you need someone to, like, run downstairs and answer your phones? And he was like, yeah, I would love that. I was like, can I come back next week? And that's how I started my whole career. Like offering whatever service I could find for free to get my foot in the door. Wow. And I met every, like all the rappers, the Alcoholics, Dos Effects, DJ Premier, Mr. C, all these people, Mob Deep, Q-Tip from Tribe Called Quest. They would all go to that radio station. This is before like hip hop was just all over the radio. You yeah. had to go to college stations also. Yeah. And from there, I met DJ Riz. He introduced me to Funkmaster Flex. I became his intern at Hot 97. And then really? I was at Hot 97 for 17 years. Hot 97 was like the stamp. But you got to understand, I was there when it became the stamp. Oh, you're right there. You know what I mean? Like, not I was, I wasn't no one big at the time. No, yeah, 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 but yeah. But like that 97, 98, 99. Oh, wow. When, That's when hip hop was so good. When every, like Nori, Big Pun, DMX. Terror Squad. Like, uh, it was, that was when uh, the fucking, uh, uh, oh boy. Yeah, uh, exactly. Fucking, uh, what the, is that? Camera. Dip Squad. Dip, dip set. set. Dip yeah. Set. That, they, that was a little right before Dip Set. It was Cameron, though. Cameron, yeah. And all these guys were going platinum. And that was very new for us. Hip hop. Like, really? DMA, like grimy gutter hip hop going platinum. So everybody was like, oh shit, it's happening. It started to bubble. And High 97 was the place you went for that. That was that and the box. Do you remember the box? We didn't, some parts of New York didn't have the box. Really? Like the Bronx didn't, but Queens did for some reason. Yeah. So the body where you order videos, right? Yeah, that shit. It's apparently, the rumor was Fat Joe took out a home loan or whatever and just ordered all his songs on the box. <laughs> is that, do you, have you heard this? I have heard that, yes. And then, because the box yeah. is like where they, it was like MTV, but it was by request. Yeah. So you paid like a dollar ninety nine and you call song, number, and you, yeah. yeah. And so he just put all his songs and all his songs were insane. Yeah. It was when Big Pun was alive. Yeah. Did you ever meet Big Pun? Yeah, of course. That's my guy. For real? Yeah. What was he like? Funny. Really? Funny, bro. I remember the first time I got his, I said, yo, give me your number. He was like, he was like, come come DJ for me for this thing. I was like, yeah, give me your number. So he writes one sheet of paper, nine, next sheet, one, <laughs> seven, dash, and then throws them up in there and goes, figure it out. <laughs> so if I want to DJ for Big Pun, I got a call. call. <laughs> so 917, I got, I got that. Then I was like, 239-843, and I fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I saw him write two first. Yeah. So I know that was first, and then I had to figure out the rest. That's crazy. But he was super cool. Funny as fuck, man. Really? Super funny. Did he, Great guy. Did he, was he overweight when you met him? Yeah. Was that, no, that's a dumb question. But did he gain weight the more famous he got? He, he lost some, and then he gained a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. He, he gained a lot. His, uh, I'm not a player, I just crush a lot. Such a great is that that reminds me that reminds me of when I moved to New York. Yeah. So I moved to New York in ninety seven. Oh yeah. That's and so that I was telling no, that was playing when you got off the plane. Like Yeah. It had that to was, be. There's there's a thing about New York that I 
I, do, I don't know if it still exists because music isn't what it was. Yeah. But I remember walking around the village and you would see nice convertibles playing loud, whatever was really hot at the time. Yeah, of course. And so that's how you'd hear, you, that's how I got introduced to a lot of music where I'd be like, what is that? Yeah. And then you'd go into Tower Records and be like, hey, yo, what's the, oh boy, boy, boy. And they're like, oh, it's Cameron. You're like. I 100% missed that era of people blasting music. Now everybody listens to music in headphones. Yeah. How do you just, nobody, sh they share it digitally. If you listen to it on TikTok and they'll share it with their friends, but nobody's playing it out loud. What's interesting to me is that, like, and I could be wrong about this, but I felt like Wu-Tang was before that pop yes. and then after that pop. Yeah. Like, it wasn't, like, there was, like, a real authentic, like, um, like moment of, like, New York hip-hop where, like, it was just, it was just New York. Yeah, it was sure. like it was and 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 but Wu Tang was like when I was in college, like Wu Tang was big when I was in college. And Method Man was big when I was in college, and then he was also big again when he put out the Blackout album or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, after I moved to out of New York, but yeah. like there was like a a blind spot of like Wu Tang. So Wu Tang was a little bit before Wu Tang. What we say is Wu Tang took it back from the West. Cause early '90s was all chronic. Oh wait, so you Snoop were Dogg. so you were there during that time, that transition period. Yes, and this was after Tupac and Biggie were dead. No, 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 no. Yeah, what? '97. Oh, '97. '97. Yeah. When the transition to yeah. like when it started going platinum, everything. Yeah. Was going, yes. This is yeah. after they passed away. Yeah. And well, they were they were murdered. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. You say passed away? Yeah, right. I say passed away if your grandmother falls asleep and never wakes up. I guess, I guess they didn't get you say you just passed away for all death yeah yeah they passed away no they were gunned down both of them <laughs> it's different they were gunned in machine gun fire it's not funny why am I laughing it's, they were passed away is I'm like, done with this coffee <laughs> 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 they were shot. They were yeah, shot. shot. Chris Chris Rock used to have a joke about that. He goes, assassinated by gunman's bullets. They were shot. They were shot. Do you remember where you oh, were when funny. Tupac died? Um, Passed away? No. Tupac, no. Because, well, Tupac was shot and then he died a couple days later in the hospital. It's different than Biggie because Biggie died right then. And I remember... I was I woke up at like 7 a.m. and they were talking about it on Hot 97. I wasn't at Hot 97 yet. It was just listening to the radio. Really? And because it, he got shot in L.A. at like, I guess, 2 in the morning. So to us, it was like 5 in the morning. So they started talking about it like right away. Man, I remember Whatever when Tupac was, was shot. Yeah. He came out on MTV News. I was at my sister's house in Tampa and I just... I think I had just graduated college, or I was about to leave to go to New York, maybe. Yeah. Or was, no, he got sh no. I was, no, I was, was still 90s. in college. I was still in college. Yeah. And uh, he was we, killed ninety six. Yeah, and we smoked a, a. We took bong hits and listened to Tupac the entire day. I had khakis on. But was that the first time you ever did that? No. No, you've oh, done no. that before. Can I tell you? You want to talk about my depth of cultural appropriation? Yeah. When uh, All Eyes on Me came out. I dressed and exactly like he did in the album and, and with like khakis and chucks and a wife beater. And then I covered myself in the same tattoos. I got high as fuck and we wrote with, 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 with magic like a marker. marker. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we went out partying our dicks off to the best album I'd ever heard. Yeah. I, I loved that. And then I only wore my do rags the way he wore his in that Aunt Jemima style <laughs> my whole life. I've never worn a do rag any way other than that. I was such a fan of Tupac. I can't tell you. <laughs> oh, he dude. spoke to me in like, and I have nothing. We have no. Wait, bandanas. We, yeah, bandanas. That's not a do rag. Bandana and do rag are the same thing. No. Yeah. Bert. Yeah. For white people, not for oh, okay. you guys. Like we don't try, we don't use them to do our hair. You don't. You don't. You you don't get a do rag and get your waves spinning. No. No. Oh, okay. But I have subscribed to his channel. Have you seen the dude who? <laughs> It, you got to put like white shit all in your hair and then you put a do rag on and you sleep in yeah, it. You sleep in it. Yeah. Then you got to brush it all day. Fucking you never got the waves. No, thank you. Uh, yeah. Bandana and do rag is different. Yeah. Here, so, do do we have any? Hey, someone downstairs, can they get me a bandana and I'll, sh I'll show you my, yeah. my bandana style?
<laughs> um, but dude, I was obsessed with Tupac, and then I was obsessed. Biggie, I came late to. So I bought Junior Mafia. I bought his album Ready to Die. Yeah. And the Junior Mafias at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Junior Mafia. Yes. Yeah, very different. Very two I mean, different. I mean, every time apart. Yeah, but I bought them at the same time. That's how late right. I was to Biggie, and then I got on a bus from Tallahassee to Tampa to go home. And a dude just got out of state prison, young guy my age, black yeah. dude, and he sat next to me and he said, uh, <laughs> he said, what are you listening to? And I said, uh, Notorious B.I.G. And he was like, oh, for real? And I was like, yeah. He goes, can I listen for a sec? I was like, yeah. And he took, he took my headsets and then he listened to him through the whole bus ride. Yeah. I, did, I didn't get him back. Yeah, that's At the very right. end, I was like, can I get my headsets back? He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he's like, he's good, man. You should listen to it. I was like, I would like to. <laughs> like hopefully, to. hopefully later when you're not around, I'll listen to him. We bought a bottle of we bought a bottle of gin uh, at a liquor store. We because you and on bus you have you ever taken the bus somewhere? Yeah. Well, that's a stupid question. Everyone yeah. has, right? Have you ever taken a bus somewhere? Yeah, everyone has, right? I thought I was special. You stop like fucking seven times on yeah. a ride to Tampa, and one of the stops there was a liquor store across the street, and he was like. He was like, oh, we should get a bottle. And I'm like, yeah, we should. And he was like, you want to get it? And I was like, oh, yeah, it looks like it'll be my job. So I ran across. I got a bottle of uh, of gin. And I want to say I got grapefruit juice or something. Oh, that's good. Nice. Might have been. Making yeah. cocktails on the bus. We, we drank gin and grapefruit juice, me and him, just out of the bottle. Just good juice. And then goosh, goosh. And I was like, oh, I hope you weren't. Sexually promiscuous in prison because I've got it now. Oh shit! Yeah, that guy. He goes. I go. I asked him what he went to jail for, and he said stabbing a dude, and he died. And I went, really? He goes, yeah, but it wasn't my fault. Like I was self defense, but I stabbed yeah. him. And I was like, cool. Right. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, keep enjoy my headsets. But that's a, that's a real prison way of saying that. What's that? I stabbed a guy, and then he died. So that means he didn't go to jail for murder. Right. He went to jail for whatever aggravated assault or something. Yeah, and the guy died. Though. Yeah, it's, you got to watch the the way they word things. So, were you always funny with when you, all the rappers were around? Were you always funny? Always, bro. I I didn't know. Chappelle, I was a DJ on the Chappelle show. Yeah. So Chappelle is the one who told me I should do stand up for real. Yeah, because we would fuck around with the audience while we were warming up, and I'd like play a song, and he would like make fun of it or something, and I, and he was always said I had the timing. But I, at the 2002, I was like, the furthest thing from my mind was being a comic. Yeah. And he's like, yo, you, you should do stand-up. Think about doing it. And I was like, shut the fuck up. Oh, dude. let me see. I'll put on my do-rag right now. Yeah, please. The, um... And then all the time I was around all these... I was just dry humor. Really? And it was just like, it just led to... I didn't even realize it, but people see my interviews. I was also on MTV, and they would see my interviews, and they're like, "Yo, how could you talk to Nas that way?" Oh, but and you knew like, him. You knew him as a regular dude. No, he was always Nas, but I knew the <laughs> what's happening. It's putting on my my do rag. This is how I used to do it. You cover the whole head. Yeah, Pac did that. This is what Pac did. Wait, hold on. And you got to tuck it in here, right? Oh, it cut tuck down, yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Do I look good? It's really good. It's a good look. Yeah. I'll keep it like this. And then yeah. if I was real gangster. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good thing you I'm glad I came here. I was in Tallahassee. I was, this is my look. <laughs> this is the closest I ever got to to blackface. <laughs> I mean, I do I used to go to Aspen and if we went snowboarding, I wore a bandana. Yeah, look, Tupac's wearing the same fucking thing. Wait, go, do Tupac bandana. I felt like he did it across with the part sticking up. I don't know. Oh, well, he did a bunch of different ways. But yeah. yeah. Like, that's the famous one. That's the one. one. That's the one. But he yeah. had a much smaller you head gotta, than I do. You got to put the thing. No, but he had a much smaller head. He had a size. Oh, you don't think he's a bigger bandana? No, he's a, he's a very small dude. Oh, okay. You, did you ever meet him? Oh, he was dead by the time you got into it. No, I never met Pop. He passed. The, uh, his, he had a much smaller head. He had probably like a six and seven eighths head. I have an eight. Yeah. Yeah, I got an eight. You have, are you an eight? Yeah. I have a fucking eight. Wait, put this on. Does this fit you? It's the worst. Yeah. That's fucking yeah, a little loose, but dipset style. You know what I mean? Dipset style. Dipset. I ran into dipset. I ran into Jim Jones and Cam Cameron at a 
Nets, uh, Knicks game, and I, <laughs> and I was like, she come out to my show, and he was like, okay, and so I just and randomly I just DM them all the time. I just, Are you raised back? Yeah. Cameron? Cameron? Yeah, Cameron's pretty cool. And then he got into shit with FaZe on Love, I guess. Yeah. And uh, I stood up. I, I didn't stand up for him. I just don't know FaZe on. I know Cameron. Yeah. So I stood up for Cameron. And and, and I don't think, I don't, whatever. I'm going to fucking, why am I getting myself into hip hop beef? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Because <laughs> everyone comes around me and was wants that, to talk all their hip hop shit. I know, because it's so, it's such a, you, dude, it's like a, it's like a, you know what you are? You're like a, you're like a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. Like you live this crazy life that we all love to hear about, and then now you're one of us, so we like get to ask all our favorite questions. But what Jehovah's Witnesses do Kurt, love? Kurt Metzger. He was Jehovah's Witness. Oh yeah. Oh. He didn't get like vaccinated or have birthday parties. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If that he had sex, sense. he had to do it poke, poke a hole through a sheet. Like that's that's, pro, that's Jehovah's Witness. I thought uh, that was Jewish. I think you're mixing up the J's. Oh, I might be Mormon. Mormon is Mormon is soaking. What do you think the have you done that? No, have you, but I mean, have you ever tried? Have you ever tried? Have you ever been inside a woman and be like, hang on, let's stop? And then you can't move? Yes, but that's was, the greatest feeling we didn't in know the world. It was like a, a, a soaking thing. It was just it was more like being quiet, like somebody was coming in the room. I would rather go back to soaking than just having sex. Cause having sex, have you ever had sex where you like you're taking forever and you're like, I just and it's it's but if you went back to like 17 years old yeah. and you knew soaking. Yeah. I, yes. The best orgasm you'll ever have where you're like, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you lost your virginity? 15. For real? Yeah. How old was she? Well, that'd be great to be like 10. <laughs> no, she was 16, but like very close. A couple yeah. months. I was almost 16. Okay. Yeah. A girlfriend? No. It was on a washing machine. <laughs> Wait, paint the story. <laughs> On a washing machine. Were my you doing boy, laundry? My boy, who was already having tons of sex, he had some girl, and he was in. They were like the two girls were friends, and he was in my room. Yeah, because he was like, "Oh, he's not fucking. He don't need the room." Yeah. So right outside of my room was like the laundry room of my house, and we just got into it, and then we just went on top of the washing machine. That's crazy. And you weren't even dating her. Uh, no. That's insane. No. Was she a virgin? Uh, I don't remember. I think you'd know. I don't remember. Oh, that's a good question. Do you still know it? her? Is she on Facebook? No, I don't even remember her name. Her name was Dawn. I don't remember her last name. I don't remember. She was like, come on, I don't want to say it. She was, she was like the, you know, the, okay, the I practice. Got you. <laughs> the practice girl. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, What's... I miss those days, bro. What? Of like, your friend has, his, his girl has a friend. And you're just in the living room being awkward oh. for a while. You know what I mean? Like teenage shit. And, like, oh. and, you just, and they go in the other room and you're just like, hey, what's up? What's going on? Like, Dude. I miss those days. I miss. Can I tell you what I miss? I miss. I miss sex not being on the, on the table. Meaning I miss trying to have to work for sex. Oh, yeah. Like really earn it. Yes. And like. Cause that was the best, yeah, the best I ever was at any at kissing, at everything was when I was trying to get her, yeah, to want to have sex in the back of a car, in a house that's being built, wherever the fuck it happened. Yeah, that's great. God. Yeah, because when you get older, you kind of know if it's gonna go down or not. Yeah. Just by like the, either conversations you had or or if you're married, you just like you're oh, like, yeah, well, you're let's married. just get to it. Yeah, that's the worst. Leanne started playing the other hand where she was like, let's just fool around for a little bit. Like, randomly. When we were during this Fully Loaded is yeah. when it happened. We were in Savannah. And she was like, "We let's find a makeout song. And I was like, what? Let's just fuck. And she was like, no, let's find a makeout song. So we opened a bottle of wine, had a few glasses of wine, and then ended up making out. And I was like, oh, this, yeah. this is old school. Yeah. That's great. Are you ever Have you had sex with every that's ethnicity? Great. I've only had white chicks. I, I asked to be here. Yeah. Um, a lot a lot of different ones. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? A lot of different ones. Yeah. A lot. But I'm also from New York. Yeah. And I travel a lot. And by the way, that mo New York sex is like, I always felt like sex in New York was a little more accessible than sex in Florida. Yeah. I mean, we're all on top of each other, bro. Yeah. 
we're all on top of each other. And especially when you're young and you're poor and like your 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 you know your mom's a um a overnight nurse. So, you know, you might have that apartment or your mom works in the day, you might go cut school, go there in the daytime. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, I've said, yeah, I've had a lot. Really? Uh, you only had white? Just white. Really? Yeah. Like, Shit. Yeah, like it's 1956 and I'm a lifeguard. <laughs> you're proud of it though, 1956. Now you're a little ashamed. <laughs> no, I know. I I mean, I uh, I don't know. I, I, I didn't know that there was, I mean, I, I know. I just had sex with white chicks. Just white. The furthest out I got was Italian. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. 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 That's well, the Mexicans of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> now I had Asian. Really? With black, Puerto Rican, Latino, Asian, Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern? Dude, I yeah. always want to have sex with an Indian chick. Indian. Really? Yeah. Who's the, who's who's the one? What other kind of people are there? Uh, Well, what, what kind Jewish, of Jewish, every Jewish chick. Yeah. Um, blind. Not blind. You ever have a dis, you ever have sex with someone with a disability? <laughs> uh, no. Think about it. A disability. Like a, I'll take stutter at this point. <laughs> stutter? No, no stutter. Pregnant. You have sex with a pregnant chick. Pregnant. Yeah. With your baby? Not mine. No. No, I had sex with a pregnant chick, but it was yeah. my kid. That's bad. Oh, it was your kid, though. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, kid. yeah, yeah. Wait, whose Pregnant? kid was it? I don't know. <laughs> Some guy. Her baby daddy. <laughs> and she had another kid. She had a kid already. Yeah. She had a kid, and she was pregnant. That girl, I got to give props off to her. That's, that's fucking impressive. I was nice back then, though. Yeah? I was nice. Like nice as in a nice guy or just nice like? <laughs> no, a nice guy. Oh, really? Yeah. Anything I've ever gotten was because I'm a nice guy. Yeah, like I in, think, this can, in this department. I, I think I would say if there's a life lesson to be learned in any aspect, that's the key to life. It's a long game, I'll t- though. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you right now. I mean this sincerely. Yeah. You, the first thing everyone noticed about you was how nice you, how kind you were. Oh. Like you're a kind guy and you're a friendly guy. That's the first thing anyone noticed, right? So by the time we got to... Uh, I forget where we were. I, I wish I knew. Tour? It. On tour, on oh, tour. Okay. By the time we got to like, I want to say New Hampshire, yeah. it was still early. The first, Leanne was the first po- person that says, have you seen what Saif was doing? And I said, no. She goes, he is pulling the crowd together in like a crazy way. Uh-huh. I said, what do you mean? Because a lot of it was for me. I would take a nap up until the show started. Yeah, because I'm first. I, so, yeah, I wake yeah. up. I wake up as as. Uh, Carter was getting off stage and you were getting on stage and I was so taking care of everything else about lineup or whatever that like I wasn't dialed in. Yeah. Leanne said that to me in New Hampshire and then the next week we were in Traverse City and and then Judy or someone else said it. Like someone yeah. started saying, but it was all about, it started with like, God, I fucking love him. Love but him. have you seen how great he is? Like, and that's the number one thing is like, oh, that's cool. Man. If you, because if you're difficult, people don't want to, yeah, like, it, it's interesting to me because there are people. No, some there's people, people who did, they crush though. They crush. They're but difficult. There, there's a, there's a guy. I'll t- I'll say his name off camera. Yeah. But there's a guy that is one of the funniest dudes in the world. But he's very difficult to be around. Yeah. And no one wants to work with him. I hate that. And so I hate yeah. That. And and he's a. Gr- I mean I know I I know him. Yeah. And he's a nice guy and nice enough. But I know yeah. that everyone has a nightmare story about working with him. So yeah. no one works with the guy. Yeah. But he's fucking great. And I, I mean. But it's it's true. It's like I think a lot of the time the only reason I work as much as I do is especially in television. So I'm a I am a nice guy. Yeah. I like to have a good time. So I like to I like to bring everyone together. I like hey, what's everyone doing for dinner? Yeah. And so that's like Big J, the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. The night and he's hilarious. But like the fact that you hit him with the two punch of like being a great guy and then also being funny. People want you to be funny. Yeah. You they know root for you, but it's long game. Everything I've got, I'm just now at 47 getting what I feel I not I don't want to say deserve, but what I've been striving for. Yeah. But because it's it's years of relationships, it's years of being reliable. Everyone knows if you call Sife, he's gonna be there early. He's gonna leave late. You can get the job done. You're gonna be sober. Sober. That's a big deal. 
But that also cancels me out of a lot of nobody hangs with me though. Yeah, but I didn't know you were sober until late into the I don't us get called for the hangs. That's what's bothering me lately. Really? Yeah, I don't get called for the hangs. I don't come up. Like Chappelle, like his Chappelle parties. No, Chappelle's different. That's like my brother. Yeah. But like there's certain people like even Michael Che, who's a good friend of mine. I was the Michael Che never had an opener before me. I was the first guy to ever go on a road with Che. And we do all these shows together. But if he goes hang to go drink, I don't get called. Really? I think it's subconscious. Yeah. It's subconscious. Like I don't I don't drink, so I don't Wait, come who's, up. Who's his drinking guys? I've never met Michael Che, I don't think. Oh my he's I got may a, have, and I apologize if oh, I have. He's got a lot. What? He's, he's who, lot, who's yeah. he drink with? Like uh, Sean Patton. Oh yeah. Nimesh Patel. Then you got Reggie Conquest, Kevin Iso, Sam J. I know Sam J. I know, whole, I know. Yeah, I know a couple of those people. Yeah, they got a whole squad. In New really? York. Yeah, but I don't get the call. That's well. That but yeah, but do you want the call? I want the call, and I want to say no. I'm not calling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at a point. I just want the call. I just want the call. So I kind of want the call. I just call want now. the invite. I, would, I wouldn't mind partying with Michael Chase. He but it's not, it's not in some big organized thing. It's just it's like, just oh, like that's who you text when you're going to go drink. Yeah, hey, I'm well, you go have home. your go-tos. Like, I don't really have anyone I call. I don't really drink with anyone. I drink with people on tour. Yeah. And But I won't drink. I don't really drink in L.A. Like, I'll drink by myself. Yeah. But, like, that's it. Like I don't, and Really? Yeah, I don't really. Of all the comics you know and guys you hang with? No, everyone's sober. Oh, yeah. Well, everyone's sober. You go to the store. It's yeah. kind of depressing. Yeah, everybody's Everyone's that, sober. It's they're that really, age now. They're business-minded. Like, Theo's sober. Theo's been sober. I, I never yeah. even partied with him when he was partying. Yeah. He was a, he was a fun. He, I, I wish I had gotten a little slice of, but I guess his partying was out of control. I, don't, I never saw it. Yeah. I really never saw it. He, I think he kept it kind of on the DL. Uh, no, no, and no one really parties in L.A. Yeah, that's horrible. I mean, it. New York's a more party like well, town. Well, again, everything's so close. Ari, he's a big drinker. Tom doesn't drink at all. Yeah. Joe doesn't drink now. He has. I mean, he used to party every now and then. But he had an incident with someone, and he's just kind of, he kind of like yeah. pulled it back. Like last time I was with him, he had a drink, but he wasn't drinking it. Yeah. You could tell that it was like off the table for him. Yeah, it's like, I'm, I know I'm the boring guy. You smoke weed though? No. You never did any of Nothing. that. Nothing. So you're sitting in the fucking. <laughs> In the booth with all these dudes. What do you mean, like, like DJing? When you yeah, when you DJ, all those like, years, yeah, bro, everything. Everyone smoking weed. Bro, I, mean, I used to DJ for Little Kim. That was my first big job. We'd be in a limo and like Little C's and Junior Mafia. Like the limo is like smoke. What do you call it? Hot box. <laughs> You're such and a square. I it, what do they call it? Hot box. Yeah, the hot, hot box, rectangle. Yeah. Hot rectangle. Um, <laughs> but I would get a. Uh, I know I would get secondhand when my stomach started to hurt. I mean, I've been around too much smoke. My stomach starts to hurt. Wait, so why did why did you never do drugs or alcohol? So th- years of therapy later in life, it seems like I've ha- I might have some control issues, but I didn't know that when I was young. Really? I just like I would see drunk family members. I remember I can vision my uncle trying to get into his apartment and couldn't get the key in the in the hole, right? Yeah. And I was a kid that my mom would always be at work. I had to go home for school by myself, and I had a key, like a latch key, but it was yeah. in my pocket. I never know. I'd tie it around your neck, you fucking idiot. <laughs> but, um, and I was like, oh, I don't want to be able to not get into my apartment, so don't do what he does. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's fucking weird. My uncles were alcoholics, and I just was like, I can't wait to yeah, do that. <laughs> like, that looks so much fun. And then, like, like drinking I, Heineken's bro, out by the pool. Listening to hip hop '90s, we're like, "Yo, my boy, his brother's gonna, yo, Friday night, my brother's gonna buy us a forty. We're gonna get a forty. We're gonna go drink it." So he buys us a forty. Is say not not saying that's uh, old English. I took one sip. I was like, "Oh, why do y'all drink this? This is disgusting." <laughs> but like every rap video, forties, every song is talking yeah. about forty. And I was like, "This is disgusting." That's crazy that you dodged. 40s and blunts. 40s and blunts. There's like they had to pressure you at times. Like, All the come time. On. All the time. I'm the expert at the shot over the shoulder. Really? I always take the you know when they bring a tray of shots. Yeah. I grab the first one, dump it right away because everybody's so excited to get theirs. Yeah. And I just cover it with my hand, and everybody's like, ah, that's that's what I was faking. And now I don't yeah. give a fuck. Now yeah. I'm, like, I'm gonna be in my room, but I was faking it. 
That's fucking insane. No, I have like, I've had three drinks in my life. Sip of a 40, no, five. Sip of a 40. Oh, you'll love this. Big pun. The only shot I ever took in my life for real. Big pun. We're at some club. And he goes, yo, let me get two shots of Hennessy. And I'm like, oh, no, thanks, pun. I don't drink. He's like, oh, I got you a shot of Hennessy. I was like, thank you. I don't, I don't drink. And he pulls out a gun, cocks it, cocks it, and puts it in my stomach. And like literally verbatim. I bought you a shot of Hennessy. I was like, thanks, bud. And I take the <laughs> shot. And then, so now he knows I don't drink. So he's like, two more. And I fucking run away. <laughs> and I felt the dizziness. I run away and I felt like, whoa. Like, and I was like, what's this? Like, this is what people want to get? This dizzy? And I was like, nah, no more. Shut Never the again. fuck. Do you realize I would, if Big Pump put a gun in my stomach? I'd be like, we're drinking until yeah, that gun of goes off. <laughs> But that's why, like, when I went on tour with you, I was like, Bert's going to hate me because I don't no. drink. I don't give a shit if anyone drinks. Like, I've never cared if you're sober or drunk. Like, yeah. I love Rosebud. Rosebud's sober. Yeah. Like, uh, I've never had a problem. I, I don't I don't want someone to judge my drinking. But do you think people that don't drink are judging you? Because that's no. what I heard. No. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm, like I said, I'm hyper uh, non-introspective about shit like right, that. Like, right, I don't right. see how people perceive me like I didn't realize towards the end of fully loaded that everyone's like he's drinking a lot like everyone was like you're really bloated you look like you're inflated like you should deflate Shit. you're red as fuck yeah you need you need to slow down like that and last night the yeah. last show we did at the gorge I killed a beer on stage and then I killed like four beers at the end of the show yeah and one of them was an IPA and I almost threw up Ugh. I was like that I go who gave it to me and Georgia goes that wasn't a Bud Light my daughter and I was like <laughs> no <laughs> It was an IPA, and she goes, sorry, my bad. And I was like, well, we learned a valuable lesson. No one chugs IPAs. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what that means. It's a Indian pale ale. They're, they're no, real hoppy. No, I know hoppy. what IPA is. Yeah. I just didn't know you, didn't, you couldn't chug it. Uh-uh. Oh, no, you can't uh, chug it. It's so fucking aggressive. It's like blowing a shoeshine boy. <laughs> it's like just a lot of smell in your nose. And so <laughs> so we, we uh, but at the end of Fully Loaded, both my daughters and my wife were like, yo. Yeah. You got to slow down. And so I haven't had a drink since fully loaded. Really? Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I also don't, like, I know that I'm smoking more cigars. Not that, I don't know. I mean, I could also stop cigars, but I know that I like, I enjoy, I enjoy cigars. It kind of de like deflates me a little bit yeah. emotionally. I yeah. just go like, calm down. But, um, yeah, I need that. I, I, I will, I've also been smoking a lot of weed lately. Like my daughter's like, you're so fucking grounded, and I was like, I didn't have the heart to tell him I'm smoking weed a lot, <laughs> a lot, and I li I love weed. Like I was, being, I've been liking getting on stage high, and writing on stage. Not not to do like a tour, right. but when you do like a fuck around set, yeah, getting high and letting your brain spin, yeah, yeah. is fun. Is really fun. I wrote like, I wrote, uh, three new jokes last night on stage. Fuck. Yeah, in the moment. That's great. Man. In the moment, and I was and good like. One's one I one was so good I was like all right it has to be someone else's joke right so I texted a group of comedians yeah. like I was they like hey, have this anyone have this and one of them was like no that is absolutely fucking wow, brilliant premise great. and I was like oh, I'm gonna be hitting another park I can't wait it's a good premise um no, so wait great. so then so then what was the progression for you to get to where you are today because because is is it's really impressive. It's not not everyone can do it. To go from music to comedy. Was it was it Chappelle? No. I mean Chappelle gave me the initial spark. Um I've done so much shit. I know I don't know how much time we've taken on this. I've did I DJ'd, I worked at record companies, I managed some artists, I was a VJ on MTV. Um so I got Chappelle, I have a rule. If you hear something from three people, it's something you should explore, right? Yeah. So so Chappelle said it to me once, and then I was on MTV. Jamie Foxx said to I used to host a rap show on MTV, but then I would sometimes fill in on TRL. Yeah. So on TRL, I would be like, with big guests, like superstars, Jamie Foxx turned to me, he goes, yo, you're fucking funny. 
And I just being normal, like I, what I call it, road trip funny. You know, yeah. when you're with your boys and you just fucking yeah. throwing them, and you you got that laughter for an hour. Yeah, I call it sleepaway camp. Yeah, funny. sleepaway camp. Yeah, where you when everyone's at sleepaway camp and your joke cannot end, yeah. and you, everyone's awake and you're still yeah, fucking you're going, fucking killing. So it was that. So he said I was funny, and then Will Smith said I was funny, and then people would always say I was funny on the radio. Now, now I used to just be a DJ. Then then I became a radio personality, and I would do like fucking little pranks like call two Chinese restaurants and put them on speakerphone with each other and like shit like that yeah but hip hop in New York especially is so tough people are funny behind the scenes like Hove Jay Z is very funny personally really but from his records you don't get it cause he's no. such like a Brooklyn like bravado right so people would always say you're funny on the radio you're funny on the radio so I was like I should try to like maybe I'll just produce a comedy show, make money because people think I'm funny. So I just started producing a show and I get one laugh, two laughs. Oh, this is how it works. And then just it just took off from there. And what year is that? 2008? Oh, really? Yeah, 08. And then at 08. what point did you fucking go, fuck it, I'm all in, I'm going to go try to get so past? So 08 was when I was producing shows and I was getting a lot of good advice from a lot of good comics. And then I was like, Go to some hood rooms and try a joke and whatever. Bombed a lot, a lot, a lot. But do you have like? Did you get? You, would you get a pass when they're like, "Oh shit, this type of sounds." I would get on. I'd be able to get on stage. Really? But that don't give you a pass with the audience. It gives you a second. Like you get a second of I like a second. Yeah. One night I did a show in this Puerto Rican bar, and the guy before me, they put me last. I didn't know you weren't supposed to go last when you're so young. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But I, they had a name. I had a name. So they're like, oh, he'll headline. Yeah. I don't even know what that meant. This guy went before me. He's talking in Spanish. Killing. I don't even speak Spanish. <laughs> killing it. Just people are stomping around, yelling. And then I go up. I had one minute of like, oh, shit. Cypher sounds. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and the, the stage was on like behind the stage. The curtain was an emergency exit. And I just walked out the emergency <laughs> exit. <laughs> But then I started taking it seriously. Then, like, a couple of people let me open up. Joe Coy was one of the first guys. You opened that, for Louis right before the pandemic. Yeah, he, Louis does not like my comedy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Louis, does not, Louis does not like my comedy. <laughs> I love, bro, I love Louis. I love Louis too. I don't I think he likes love, mine either. <laughs> bro, I love Louis. And I got. I think like five shows with him. Yeah. His assistant liked me and I got somehow got on and he, and I saw him at the cellar, the comedy cellar. He's like, we're doing a run, right? Bro. Me and Adrian Appalucci. Yeah. He's watching her side stage. And uh, what's the word? Enamorated. What's the word? Enamored. Enamored. Watching her. Oh, bro. When I go on, <laughs> he's fucking God. But, um, I worked with Louis. I worked with Louis 19 years ago, uh, and uh, I sat backstage with him, and I loved Louis. Like I knew, I knew Louis. Like I this is 19 years before yeah, he popped. Yeah, before he was doing anything. Yeah, and uh, there was a guy, Eric. Uh, fuck, what was Eric? Eric Estrada. No. Oh fuck, Eric. Eric. He's passed uh, away. He's oh. a comic who's passed away. He got shot. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he uh got I think he got hit by a car. Oh fuck. Eric uh he was a he was he had he had a drinking problem but and he would and at the time he was sober and he was eating Xanax like crazy and we were sharing the condo and he had a really high pitched voice. Hey! Ah! Eric Myers. Never heard of him. Pull him up, Eric Myers. He's passed away. He's uh he was so talented. He was so talented. But as you know, happens in this business, he couldn't get out of his own way. Mm -hmm. I mean that like obviously. I think I don't think I'm speaking ill, but uh, this was him. And oh, I seen that guy. Yeah, yeah, I see. He him. was so fucking funny. Yeah, and he was really like just a pure spirit. But man, when he he drank, he would take it to the next. Really, not yeah. not like. I'm talking, and once again, I'm not speaking out of school, and I'm not speaking ill. I think he'd want people to hear this to kind of warn people because yeah. he is past. 
but like he would he would get drunk in between shows and not be able to perform. Right. Like he would he he really had a problem. And I, and that weekend it was me and him and he was sober and I was not sober. I was definitely not sober. I just had Georgia. And Louis watched him and was enamored. He was like, This guy is fucking well, funny. Yeah. And I was like, I'm getting ready to go on stage. And Louis was like, Yeah, I'm gonna go take a walk. <laughs> and he just got up and left. And I was like, Bleh. And yeah. then the last night of that show or that week, they were rough shows. Pablo Francisco was supposed to headline, but he broke his leg. And so Louis filled in. Yeah. And I was gonna open for Pablo. And which probably was gonna be a better fit. Louis, no one New Louis. Right. So the last night we had, there was a. But they were expecting Pablo. They were expecting Pablo. Oh, yeah, that's a crazy mix. Yeah. That's a switcheroo. And, and you don't know who Louis is. He's just a bald, right. redheaded dude yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, it, who did not like his family. And that was his angle. Yeah, He's yeah, like, yeah. my daughter's a cunt. Yeah. He's like, anyone who sits at a front door and won't put their shoes on is a fucking cunt. I, I'm paraphrasing Louis' yeah. jokes. Uh, and the last night that we were at the we were at the bar before the show, we're talking and someone one of the, someone had a magic book of like they're like, Okay, pick a color. And you're like, Okay, pick a number, pick a number. Pick a, a country, awesome. Now pick an animal. And I was like, All right. And the guy goes, Are you thinking of an elephant? And I go, I am. And he goes, That's pretty cool, right? And I was like, How the fuck did that happen? So I brought that book on stage. And I thought if I start bombing, I'll just read. Yeah. I'll just do this. So I'm bombing <laughs> bad. And I go, I go, all right, fuck it. So I open the book. I go, all right, everyone. We just did this. It's pretty cool. Pick a number. Pick a color. Pick a country. I go, on the count of three, everyone say what they're thinking. And I go, one, two, three. And the whole room goes, elephant. And they're like, what the fuck? I go, it's crazy. And so I flip through. I do another one. And they're like, and I'm like, uh, pick, oh, pick, pick a, and what's the girl's name? And they're like, Susan. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. I'm like, this is amazing. I do one more. I'm like, and then I'm like, all right. What are they? And they're like, Nimbibia. And I'm like, yeah, the fuck up. I'm like, thank you. That's my time. Good night. And Eric Myers goes up. He's like, that's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> Hi, holy shit. That was Burke Reiser. Burke Reiser. Keep it going for your next headliner. Louis CK. And Louis gets up and he tells like a fucking joke and it doesn't work. And he's like, what? And someone's like, do one of those magic tricks. Oh, fuck. He was like, oh, no. give me the fucking book. So he had the book on there and he just was like, all right. And he's like, I guess we're doing that. It was a Sunday night show. Oh, he did not. He was not. No. But we're friends now. But like, yeah, but still. But we were. He was not a fan of my stand. He's like, he said really nice to me and things to me since. Like, it's great to see where you're going with the career. You're doing great things. This. Well, and you that. think he likes your comedy now? I don't think so. I don't. I he likes not. you. He likes me. He likes everything you're doing. I think he likes. I think he likes. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if he likes everything I'm doing. Right. But like, I think he he likes me. I think he. Yeah. We're friends. We're peers. Not peers, but like. You know, yeah. and so, I, you know, and we've yeah. had a lot of, you know, it's, it's weird. I think you get into a group of people where you have similar life experiences that not a lot of the world shares. So you right. can connect yes. really quick yeah. on those. Yeah, bro. In this game, you connect with but B. I'm coming from a whole nother world and I could connect with like almost racist comics because we got some. I love Gillis. World. I love him. <laughs> I think Shane Gillis is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he. I think Louis likes me when he sees me at the cellar around. Yeah, and he's like, "This guy's a good guy." But does not but like you got to like, understand, like his what he's doing is what he's always done is so, you know, like I, I was I've said this to other people, but like there are certain people, there are certain people who take chances because they know that sells or they think that's hot in the yeah. market right now. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, that's cool. But then there's people like Louis who take sincere chances. Because his spirit tells him to. 100%. Like he would not be satiated if he didn't take a, a real chance. 100%. Same with Attell. I mean, those are guys that I don't think, I don't think they cross lines on purpose. I think they cross lines because that's who they are. Yeah, it's what it is. Tommy's that way. Yeah. Is, is like Tom, I don't think like he loves like a good ch uphill challenge. Whereas like... I don't know that I, I I don't care about it that much. It's fun every now and then, but it's not what drives me. What yeah, drives yeah, me yeah. is like a I like the riddle inside a joke. I like the yeah. I like figuring out the wave. I like I like pushing boundaries, but like I don't need to try to press everyone's buttons to get away. Right. Like it's not my right. thing. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm a, I'm with you, but I love what they do though. I love it. Love I love it. and I also love. And I was just telling it. someone this the other day. I love, I love like really good clean wholesome comedy too mm -hmm. like jackie cation is jackie cation greg warren 
Uh, Chad Daniels pushes way a lot of buttons. Like he's not. I used to think old school Chad Daniels was like clean. Dude, he fucking. Do you see him on tour? What he, the shit he was talking about? Yeah, he was. Fucking, Wait, but does he not curse? He'll curse, but he'll oh. take big chances yeah. on like religion, yeah, politics. No, his, um, what was the thing that he kept having trouble with? I forget. There was a joke he kept having trouble with, and I was like, "Oh, he probably won't do that tomorrow." And just kept doing it, kept doing it. He goes, "No, this is my joke." Yeah, it was Jesus related. Yeah. Something Jesus related. Because I have a Jesus joke, and that's the only joke that was like kind of bombing on tour. <laughs> we're, in like, the, we're in the fucking red states. That's what I'm they, saying. They believe in God. No, 100%. <laughs> yeah. I have a joke. I, it's a, the, the premise is there's no white people named Jesus. And I, in the middle of the joke, I'm losing the crowd. This happens all the time. And I go, you know, I'm not talking about Jesus. I'm talking about white people. Yeah. But once you say that word, they just click off. Because we still believe Jesus is white. Fine. The, the idea, the idea that he was black is like kind of. I don't. I think. I, I think, didn't. But I think, I'm not saying he's not. I didn't say. I what think he white was. people go. Okay, Santa's white too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know there's a girl that got fired from a uh, Megan Fo- Megan Fox Megan 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 Kelly Megan Kelly got fired for saying that Santa was white. What? Why? See why Megan Fox got let go? No. Megan Kelly. No, I can't. She be. said, "Hold on, Santa's white," and someone's like, "Santa's not real." <laughs> 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 it doesn't matter. She. Yeah, but the image type of Santa, in Santa. Type in Santa. The image of Santa is white. Yeah, the image, but it's not. He's, yeah. No, Santa she had, is just white. She said. No, she had some. Jesus other was a white man too. This is Megan Kelly. By the way, well, Megan Santa Kelly is hot as fuck. Yeah, they all, all those Fox News girls are. I mean, and can you imagine? Can, can you, you imagine? Me can you be imagine? I'm not saying Megan Kelly's. I'm not saying she's. I'm not saying she's racist, right? She's. I don't think she is. She's probably a regular good person. But can you imagine being married to a white chick that talks wild shit about Santa like that? Like how fun that would be. I Just for like. Like, cause usually if I've always been the one talking wild shit and Leanne's like pulling me back, she's yeah. like, what the fuck are you doing? I was like, well, I'm just like, what was the one she said the other day? <laughs> what was the one I just, ta- I just talked about it. Ah, oh, fuck. I was saying something and she's like, hold on. You can't talk like that. That's crazy talk. You can't talk like that. I was like, easy, babe. I'm working on a bit. She goes, well, I know, but it's just off basis. So like that's every chick I've ever dated. Can yeah. you imagine dating a chick that's like, I don't think you're going hard enough. <laughs> Tell them what you think of them. <laughs> that's Megan Kelly. Megan Kelly would be like. I would be, love. I want to date a racist chick. I would love that. I can find one for you. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I want to date a racist. Not like in a clan. Like, yeah, not too racist, but just like. Says wild, says says off color shit. Yeah, I've had that before. Like, like I've dated girls from Staten Island. <laughs> oh, for real? <laughs> yeah, where they're like, I've dated an Italian girl. Oh man, she's the one I got away. Really? She's like from Staten Island, has black friends, went to a school with black people, but still has certain opinions about certain black people. Really? Yeah, you never seen this? Like, New York racists, they're the best. No, wait, describe. Like, loves hip hop, loves yeah. fucking whatever, uh, black culture, black music. Yeah. But then, like, you know, f- four guys are walking slow across the street or they say something foul to her and she'll drop the N word. Oh, shut up. Yeah. Oh, I've never seen that. Yeah. Oh, I've never seen that. I've never, I only know one chick that used the N word and she was a stylist. Yeah. And she was, she was saying it. As if she was allowed to say it. Yes. She wasn't using it. She was right. saying it like. Right. And I was like, easy. We were at a sushi restaurant. And I was like, hey, drop yeah. the end bombs. Like, you're killing me. I was like, I, I, I can't be around you if you're talking like that. Well, <laughs> Saki was, brings it out of She me. was like, I just worked for Puff Daddy yesterday. He, he didn't have a problem with it. And I was like, I don't think you said it loud enough then. Because I'm certain <laughs> if he said, if he heard it, he would have a problem with it. Especially the way you're saying it. You're not with a uh uh at the end. Uh. She was with a hard, like she was starting yeah. a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was, she was so pretty. Can you? That's how hot this chick was. Yeah. 
that I you let it slide. It slide. Yeah. I, I sat with her at dinner, at lunch. We were at lunch at a sushi restaurant on Beverly, and I let it slide. Pull up a picture of her. This is how hot she, I'll show you a picture of her, okay? Yeah. This is her. Hang on. Is there anything here? This is her. She Could, could she say the N-word to you? That around other people. Like privately? Yeah, privately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah privately. <laughs> Listen, man, I don't care what people say, Is there say, a racial man. slur for Puerto Ricans? Not a good one. What's the best Spick. one? Spick. Oh. Spick is corny. That's so 1982. No, I love I love in the 80s, like, you fucking Spicks. And you're like, <laughs> I'm a Spanish person in control. Like, ugh. ugh. <laughs> Wait, is that what it stands for? No. Oh. I don't even know what Spick means. Like, Mexicans got. Christine, you know what it means. <laughs> what does it mean? Christine, you use it. Google it and then read it out loud. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I never knew what so like, meant. So yeah, what type in racial slurs for because, Puerto Ricans? Because what will happen is, especially in other parts of the country, they just give us Mexican slurs, but that they don't even affect us. I remember hearing racial slurs for Puerto Ricans from Cuban dads. Whoa, like in Spanish or something? No, no, like, no. Oh, in like, in in joke form, but they were yeah, like. It was a slur. Uh, it was a it was a joke. Like all the mango eaters or something. No, 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 no. It was a joke. I can't I can't tell can't you the joke. It. I can't tell you the joke. Racial slurs for Puerto Ricans. Springer. No. Bro, I, there's there's no good ones. There isn't any good ones. No. Do, wait, are Puerto Ricans exempt from racial slurs? We get the the generic Latin ones. But we don't Stupid. have like there's no specific M Mexicans out of all the Latinos who's got the worst racial slurs. Yeah, Mexicans for sure. They get all the bad ones. Yeah, Mexicans are like, but are they that bad? It's well, always the intent behind it. Like, like what's Mexican beaner? That's, what is that? Because they make because they have beans in their food. What is what is that? Yeah, that's not that's not. That, None that, of them that, are good. And that was and that was so ingratiating so quickly into the like them themselves saying it. Yeah, like what does it, it mean? I've never really. The racists are Cuban lazy. Ones, with Cuban slurs. ones, I don't remember any Cuban ones. That's crazy. There's yeah. a lot of Asian racial slurs, a lot of Jewish racial slurs. Yeah. You Irish and and and, and uh Italian kind of phased out. Like yeah. Like, Mick. Well, but even Mick is because their names have MC. Yeah. WAP was meant without papers. Is that what that stood for? Yeah. W O P was without papers. Did they not come here with papers? No, like this is like Ellis Island days. Oh. So there was no papers back then. That's so they're crazy. like, oh, you you went out papers. Like, what? Then why would the M-word have so, such lasting, it's got such a lasting imprint because it's, I bet it's the oldest American racial slur. Oldest, first, and also it's so like. It hurts. Strong. It's man. just, it's and, got but, all the. But it doesn't got, mean anything else, right? Yeah. Or where does it even come from? Does it come from Nigeria yeah, where, or Niger in Africa? Where did it come from? Because think yeah, about where it. did it come from? Because all other racial slurs is because something you do or something in your culture, like like wet back. What, what does that mean? Because they came in the water. I don't even know what that means. Like a penny pinching Jew, you know? Yeah, like, that's because like, it, it's like yeah. they're all yeah. Hey, type in the etymology of the M word. This is gone. I'm this trying is... to promote a TV show here. Oh. <laughs> Have we even mentioned the TV show? Wait, so what's the TV show? I, I can't say it now. <laughs> no, we... now's when you should say it. Now's when everyone's going to watch. I have a show on A&E called Hip Hop Treasures. No where way. Where we go searching for hip hop collectibles. LL Cool J is the host. For real? Yeah. And the, the first episode was all about Biggie looking for the Biggie crown. It's oh, are you dope. fucking kidding me? It's dope. Wait, hold on. Yeah, it's a great show. This podcast has gone left. Okay, let's no more no more racial slurs. <laughs> let's go back to the hip hop okay. treasures. Okay, no more racial slurs. All right, they would say pause Although, that. Keep googling it. I'm curious. Look at that. Is that oh, yeah, Ice wow. T is L O Cool J Ice T, Yo Yo. Remember Yo Yo? Yeah. And me. Shut the fuck up. So yeah, what are I we? I thought you knew that's for? why I was here. No, 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 no. Oh no, I now I'm fucking fascinated. Sorry. So wait, what other treasures are do we find? Oh, uh, I don't want to give it away. Oh, um, so wait, dude, hang on. But is that the episodes? Type in, go to episodes. Can I see episodes? There's only there's three? only three so far. Let me see. And is this already started airing on? Yeah, a &E? just yeah. It's the third three weeks. Hip hop treasures. Dmx. 
DMX was the best one. DMX, we found dope Jada shit. Jada Kiss. Jada Kiss is slick. Bro. What was the what was the Jada Kiss story on Drink Champs? Which one? Uh, Jada Kiss's episode on Drink Champs was fucking awesome. Was it the Nori took the pound back? He, was that yeah? You guys saw that? <laughs> I think so. Because this guy was standing next to Jada Kiss and his crew, and Nori was giving everybody a, a dap. And then he goes, Who's that guy? And he goes, He's not with us. And he goes, <laughs> Season one, or episode one's notorious. Yeah. Episode two, ah, oh, Coolio. Yeah, I, see I worked with Coolio. him once. I worked with him once. Um, and episode three is DMX. Yeah. Are these full episodes? Unforgettable hip hop. DMX, icon. yeah, we found his car. Which one? The 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 fucking remote controls? No, no, real car with he had a um a painting of Aaliyah on it. And he had it on the cover of a magazine. And the car was lost. No one knew where it was. This this guy, mechanic in Westchester County in New York, had the car all these years because DMX never paid the bill of getting it fixed. So the guy just kept it. And in the car was like rhyme books. No. Rhyme books, flyers, um, letters he wrote in prison. It was crazy. We, that was the find. Shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, man. So the first one's Notorious is Crown. Yeah. Second one is Coolio. What? Coolio and Ice T. What is it? Most episodes have two people, but Notorious and DMX only just them. So uh, Coolio had the bike from his first video. Yeah. He had, um, I forget what else he had. Then Ice T had the sampler that he made the first albums on. And then, you know, because they're building a, a hip hop museum in the Bronx. It's called the Universal Hip Hop Museum. No. Yeah, it's, it's huge. So this show is connected with the museum where we're trying to go find these artifacts collectibles. Holy shit. So what are they like, okay, so what what collectibles would I want to see? Like I'm thinking right now. Flavor, like Flavor, the, the clock. clock. Yeah, Flavor, that was the first thing I was going to say. Yeah. Flavor, 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 Clock. Flavor, um, Clock. You got, okay, so I'm trying to think like uh, what was the, well, you, you have memorable chains on people. So uh, Jam Master J's chain yeah. with the Adidas because Run DMC was the first group ever to get like a, a a brand endorsement by Adidas. Really? So they all used to have these Adidas sneakers on their chain. Yeah. But the, the story about Jam Master J chain is that it was solid gold, no clasp. So if anyone that, a lot of people try to rob them. And when you, <laughs> when you pull the chain, a lot of times it would break and they run away. But with Jam Master J, you pull the chain, you just bring him closer to you so he can clock you. <laughs> so people would grab it, and like you're pulling him close, and he would just bam. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, it up. happened a few times. Holy That's like, shit. So there was no, it was solid. Yeah. Was solid. So that was in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and uh, we're trying to find it on the show. Can't tell you if we found it or not. You gotta watch and so how show. many episodes do we have? There's eight episodes. Eight episodes? Yeah. Flavor Flavor Clock's a big one. Yeah, Flavor Flavor Clock. Um, who else did we do? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of like stuff what's you the, would know. Like the 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 things that are memorable. Like what would be two Tupac has to be in there. Oh, but, Tupac has so much stuff. Yeah, right. Um, Tupac always had like that leather vest. A leather like maybe vest the, was the vest from the something iconic from Tupac would be the vest from the California Love video that like Mad Max kind of looking thing. Um, Kanye, the you ever saw Kanye the Bear? The Bear yeah. used to be on stage with Kanye. We were trying to find that. Um, the uh, the Run DMC. This is a great show. Where no, can, great. do you have to watch it only on A and E or is it I, streaming? I, I think right now it's only on A and E, and it's Saturdays at ten in the morning at night. Okay. So as far as me promoting the show, I believe Saturdays at ten is a great time. Thank you, A and E. Me, as an individual who wants people to see the show, horrible time slot. <laughs> I don't know who's... None of... People watching TV Saturday night... At 10? 10. But yeah, but, it, but here's the thing is you can DVR it, and yeah, it's got to be streamable. I, I bet A&E's got to deal with like... There's an A&E... Um, Discovery or something? There's an A&E... Uh, something you could... You can add A&E to, I think, maybe Prime? I should I should know this, right? But I love A and E, bro. A and E's one of my A &E's, favorite channels. A and E's great. First forty eight, sixty days in, neighbor wars. 
Oh. I love A and E. So when they told me this show, I was in. Fuck. And yeah. I collect a lot of stuff too. So really, yeah, I have a lot of stuff. I would like to collect some comedy stuff, but I don't think there's too much comedy stuff other than shirts people wore on specials. Like Bobby Kelly's got Patrice's hat. Um, from the special, from the one where he did uh, elephant in the room. Elephant in the room. Yeah, that's good. I was he's there. got the hat. Um, Bobby Kelly has that. Yeah. Wow. He's got a uh, in a in like a box. Yeah, that's great. Right, but that'll be lost. Like that'll be lost one day. Like, yeah. cause, you know, because for Bobby Comedy's Patrice different. was a friend, he'll hold on to it. Yeah. And then one day Bobby will pass, and Max will have it. And Max will be like, you know, shit out of here. He'll be like, he'll be like, I got Voss's watch and Patrice's hat. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna get rid of this shit. Yeah. Well, he knows Voss, but he doesn't know Patrice. Yeah. Like yeah, I, I mean, I would yeah. like, I would like, uh, like, uh, uh, Bob Saget had Rodney Dangerfield's. A joint holder. He would have a bunch of joints rolled and put in a box, and then he'd smoke joints throughout the day. That would be badass. The shit with comedy is you'd have to, it'd have to be sentimental. I wouldn't mind one of the one of the like one of the old. I'll tell you what I wouldn't mind for real, and you'll never get it. But one of the old paintings or one of the old pictures from Rogan's old podcast studio, what? like the Jimi Hendrix or the. Why won't you get it? Where is it? Is I'm sure he's gonna hold on to it. Oh yeah. I yeah, bet he's, he's got them. In, I bet they're up in his new studio somewhere. But like Rogan's got a great. He's got like that Jimi Hendrix or the uh, Rosa Parks one that Rogan had up in his studio. Oh, that'd be crazy. Yeah, and then I think he had who else did he have? Like something from Rogan's studio would be cool uh, as like memorabilia for comedy. Yeah, well now now comedy's a lot more visual, so there'll be more things you remember that you want to get your hands on. But like what comedy's what like Eddie Murphy's. Suits from oh, the, I would take one of those saying? red like suits raw, or the purple suit, or, or raw or um, delirious. I wouldn't mind one of Segura's like triple XL shirts from his earlier specials. That's funny, yeah, that's funny. When he had to like, he had to get him specially made. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, he'd buy a shirt and then they'd let it out here oh. so it fit him, and they'd make it longer in the front. I, need yeah, I wouldn't that. mind one of those. Yeah, who's that guy? You have that guy's number? <laughs> uh, his he was he was. They called him the tent maker. He made Ralphie's suits and he made Tom's outfits. Oh. Yeah, he had to make Tom's shoes because Tom's feet would swell after hours standing on stage. Shit. He was so fat when he did those. So his feet would swell. So the guy would put elastic in the sides of Tom's shoes. So he cut slits in his shoes and then put elastic so Tom's feet could swell. Oh, fuck. Yeah. His, I mean, the amount of stuff Tom did just to be comfortable when he was that size is really crazy. Yeah, that's the worst. Yeah. Man, I, I heard his belts were, caught, were like two cows worth of belt. They couldn't do one cow. He was that big? I guess. I don't know. No, he wasn't that big. <laughs> nah, he was fucking with me. Uh, whose sunglasses? Like Elvis's sunglasses would be cool. Biggie sunglasses. Biggie sunglasses. We got a pair. Really? Yeah, we got one pair from his son. He, oh, he, yeah. Wait, Biggie, you were just with his son, weren't you? Yeah. I just saw that video. Yeah. Well, that that was from when I shot it, and then I just yeah. put it out. Yeah. Uh, great kid. Is he, he's living out CJ. here. He lives here, yeah. He's from what's he's he, from here. What's he doing? I don't know what he does. He's rich. Oh, is he? Yeah. Biggie's estate. Oh, is there a lot of money in that? Oh yeah. So, hey, type in how much money is in Biggie's estate. Oh yeah, I want to see this. That's curious. Because here's a crazy shit. You wanna know some crazy shit? Yeah. My estate goes away the second I die. <laughs> the second I die, my daughters are like, we'll put out a documentary about dad. <laughs> Do one of those fucking Yeah, right. But yo, hundred and sixty so, million dollars. I bet you it's more. And his mom gets some. Well, his mom, his son, and his daughter run the estate. Really? Yeah. But here's the thing. You ever heard Jay Z says a lot of biggie lines? Yeah. This is what I fucking hate about people. So Jay Z, a lot of his songs, he has a line from Biggie that he'll say, yeah. and then people are always like, "Oh, he's biting Biggie. He would not be the king of hip hop if Biggie was alive." Biggie was the best. You you know you always try to be Biggie. Every time Jay Z says a Biggie line, Biggie's kids eat. You have to clear that line, really, because Biggie's the writer, and that part of that money goes to his kids. Shut so up. So by literally just by saying a rhyme on a record, he's taking care of these kids for however long. If you're on a if your if your Biggie line is on a hit Jay Z record. You get a piece of that? Jesus. But people are stupid. You ever notice? That's fucking. 
They, his kids, Biggie, he takes care of his kids. Doesn't have to give him a dime. His son CJ, that's crazy. No, my state's gone. The second but I what, die. But what do you mean it's gone? Like, what am I like? You don't have a, some documents or something? No, no, no. Like, they'll get like the houses and stuff, and they'll get like a couple lease payments on cars. But like, I don't have like my, my I don't have like a an estate that's going to be dr- accruing wealth. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, once I'm dead, I'm dead. Like, I'm not going to do any more. You only make money from touring and specials. So the no, specials. What about will, in, you, you're investing in stuff. Well, yeah. The, I mean, like there'll be money. Get the laundry around. mat. There'll be there'll be a laundry mat. Yeah. There's like a car wash. Yeah. Um. I'm opening a bar. No, I I I will. Like I don't have a body of work that will keep paying. Right. Yes. Yes. I have. I'll tell you what you I got have. Life insurance. Yeah, I got life insurance. Yeah. yeah, but it's not a fucking. Sorry. Is that right? Is that they right? got a couple Rolexes. They they've already claimed their Rolexes. Isn't that crazy? My daughter's like, can I get that one? And I was like, huh? wait, hold on. I'm still here. Can I try it on real quick? You know, I'm watching you. I I would I have I have roughly probably four years worth of footage that they could put a do- they could do a documentary about. A documentary, me. yeah. That's good. Yeah. I mean, what so what? Fuck that I, mean, I know, but it's nice to know that Biggie, when he dies, and he only had like what, two albums, three albums? Yeah, two plus Junior Mafia. Yeah. But he wrote a lot. He gets publishing from other stuff too. Yeah, but and it's 160 million. Do you think it would be worth that if he was still alive? Do you think there's a value that goes like like when you look at like Tupac's estate? Yeah. Because you can't get it anymore. Do you think that increase I wonder if that's that's an interesting question. For a lot of people, yes. So like like look at Craig Mack, right? Craig yeah. Mack and Biggie were peers. They were like, yeah. they both came out at the same time on Bad Boy. Yeah. Craig Mack first. Craig Mack first. Craig Mack was the first artist. And then you look at Craig Mack's estate versus Biggie's estate, and you wonder, had Craig, no, this is a horrible thing to say, but if something had happened to Craig Mack after his first album, he'd go down as a legend forever. I think that's a weird no. thing about dying. He would have, but no, he didn't have the body of work that Biggie had. He was great, though. Yeah. Craig Mack was great. Incredible. But he didn't have what Biggie had. He didn't. You got to remember, Biggie wrote his albums. He wrote Junior Mafia albums. Wrote Lil' Kim's albums. Not all. Really? He wrote some. Not as much as Junior Mafia. Who played Lil' Kim in the Biggie movie? Oh, I forgot her name. Well, you said that she is fucking hot as shit. Something with an N. She is... Nia, Nata- not Natasha. What's her Nia, name? Naya. Yeah, something like that. No, narcissist. Narcissist. Naya narcissist. She Who played Lil' not- Kim? She, her naked in that movie. She is the <laughs> hottest fucking chick. That's one. That's what I really fucked up with. I never f- hooked up with a black chick. Well, why not? Uh, N- Naturi. N- yeah, Naturi. That's it. it was type in Naturi. But why? Why didn't you? I just didn't have access. You were at the black shows at. In New York, at oh the yeah, but I was, I was, I wasn't hooking up with anyone then, because I was like, I'm so fucked up with chicks. I need to stay sober. I need to stay out of it, single, and uh, and and get like and get a career to in order to but get. But there's a, chick. a lot of black people in Florida, mm. like you know when you there, watch you know, cops. Florida, I gotta be. A- <sighs> you watch cops? No, I, I, I was like, hey guys, can I do a ride along? I'm looking to meet a black chick. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, cool. You got her husband in the car? I'm going to go talk to her. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> she was, can you type in her naked? Oh, here we go. This, she was so, when she was naked and she was rapping to Biggie in yeah. that. Oh, yeah, when she was on top of him? She, yeah, she yeah. is. Wait, she does a lot of naked scenes. Yeah, there's a lot of naked. Nature go, yeah, go back to, go to the, okay, yeah, go to the, wait, she's naked with a lot of people. She was in other shows. But naked in all of them? It's a requirement. She is beautiful. Go to the one yeah, in the dead it. center. The, 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 no, no, to the right. Yeah, we, no, the, you were on the right one. You were on the right one. Go left. No, go left. That one. <laughs> no, wait, what is this? Wait, what is this? That's not Biggie. Wait, is, that's not Biggie. <laughs> that guy's very that much guy in shape. That guy's beautiful. Oh, <laughs> nudebase.com. Wait, go to the... No, that can't be her. Go to that one. Well, she wait, gets that, it in. Now we're just looking at her naked. Go to the yeah. go to uh, to the left, to the left of that, to the left of that. There, there we go. That's oh. her in in the yeah, in the yeah, yeah. Judgy. 
God, she has a great fucking body. Yeah. I don't like it. You don't like it? I don't like when girls have great bodies. It makes me feel uh, ashamed of mine. Oh. I need a little I need a little insecurity. Can I tell you what happens? Whoa. That's an odd picture. That is very odd. Is she no, it's not is that real? She just has her titties out on the red carpet with Michael K. Williams. But with those things, I mean, you might as well. Nude singer from New Jersey. I guess that's her thing. She was like nude. 22 photos. Keep scrolling. (laughs) 22 photos. Wait, what is this site? Keep going. Internet is filled with. Wait, hang on. Why is she? No, this can't be real. The. why is she just out here with her titties out on red carpet? Dude, I would like to see a Medea porn. That can't be real. No, this is something's off with this. No. This is just too. Yeah, somebody's doing all this. <laughs> <laughs> I like having sex like I like Leanne's body is insane. I never. And when I, I, I will, thank you. I guess. Uh, I, uh, but I, I, every time I have sex, I, I say to myself, I can't believe I get to do this. Isn't that crazy? Like that, I, I feel like a child. I go, I can't believe I get to do this. All right. So let's talk about the show. So the show's Saturday nights at 10 PM yeah. for, uh, Biggie's crown, DMX's car. No, DMX, DMX. We, we found the car by accident. We were looking for. Oh, by accident. Yeah. We were looking for his, um. The overalls he wore at Woodstock '99, yeah, the red jumpsuit. That's yeah. what we were looking for. Never found it. And, no, never found it. Find but the car. Ended up going. We found he had a lot of other jumpsuits of different colors, but not the red one. Was there any guns in the car? <laughs> not when we got there. No. Oh yeah, I it, guess they would have pulled those out. Twenty yeah. years. <laughs> um, but his wife was like, "Oh, I think the mechanic might have had something, something, whatever." And we went to go check it out, and we fucking found it. Like. Cause he showed us his rhyme book, and he oh, and wow, the guy from Rough Riders is going crazy, and then he goes, "Oh, I got something else," and we drive to another location, and he pulls the tarp off, and we lost it. That w- that one was not set. Some of them are set up for TV. Yeah, the producers know they won't tell me, but the producers know what we're gonna find, and then yeah. if they want me to be surprised on camera, that one was like, "Holy shit!" The producers didn't even know. That's fucking and he pulls the, crazy. the the cover off, and I remember the car instantly because it was I think it was on the cover of Vibe magazine, and it was amazing. DMX is DMX is I, I wanted to go visit him in prison when he was in Arizona, just to like meet DMX. <laughs> so I was like I was I was like why not right yeah, yeah why not God he was fucking so awesome oh he was the best he was the, the realest dude ever he doesn't the seem realest. like he ever had like to any. Did the the verses with him and Snoop was I was with Snoop when that came out yeah and I was like I was just, I remember one night just all night talking to Snoop about it like bro he, Snoop treated him Snoop is a gentleman bro Snoop's the best Snoop Snoop treat because you know DMX he had some hard times yeah but Snoop treated him like a god that night he just Snoop just gave it to him yeah. And was just bigging him up. Snoop is the best. Snoop really is the best. Snoop is the best. Man, what a career that guy's had. Snoop is the most famous hip hop celebrity ever. Right? I think so. Most like He's hip hop royalty. Yeah, he's not like the most he's not the richest. He's pretty fucking rich. No, I know he's rich. Yeah. But he's not like Jay Z's like super, super rich. But there are people who do not know what Jay Z looks like. No one doesn't know what Snoop looks like. Yeah. Snoop's Snoop, iconic. Yeah, Snoop is pr- transcended. Is all Snoop hip-hop. bigger than hip hop? Yes, for sure. Wow, that's for sure. Crazy. You, there's people who, there's white people probably or you know middle of the country people who have seen Snoop and don't even know. <laughs> like they know he's my a dad ra- knows Snoop, but he couldn't tell you one of his songs. Not even one of his songs, God but he knows damn. who Snoop is. How do I get bigger than comedy? I think you're on your way. You seem like you're on your way. I think there's people that know me that have, don't know my stand up. They're like, "Oh, you're the shirtless guy." Well, you're all, yeah. You're Kool Aid. You're I the mean, shirtless Kool Aid guy. Anytime I say I'm on tour with Burt Kreischer, I just say, "You ever seen the comic with his shirt off?" And they, everyone goes, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." That's crazy. They know That's that. crazy that Showtime thought that was a big mistake, and it was at the time. <laughs> it was no one watched my special, and now it's kind of my thing. But it's yeah. so funny. It's like just there was no thought into that. Yeah. 
And now I look back and I go, God, man, I'm a brilliant marketer on accident. <laughs> Well, this has been a great episode. Dude, I love you, man. I think you're the man, fucking greatest. Thank you so much. And congrats on the new show. Yeah, I I'll appreciate watch it. it. I'll watch it. Yeah. I'll stream it. I'll definitely stream it. I could watch. I could put that on a flight, download all the episodes, and watch it back to back to back to back Listen, to back. I, I know I got to go. Thank you for having me. I'm telling you right now, that show, I shot it, and I was like, this is a mess. The way I didn't even know what I was shooting. It was yeah. a mess. They put that shit together so brilliantly. Dude, with editors them. Yo, are edit fucking awesome. Bro, I shout out. I don't even know their names. I don't know who they are. Shout to the editors because LL did his thing. Yo, yo. There's two guys, Paradise and Pete Nice from Third Base. I remember Pete Third. Nice? Fuck yeah. He's one of the curators of the museum. Oh, really? He's a big collector. Yo, yo, me, Ice-T, LL, all did our thing. The great guests, great finds. But watching it with the fucking music and the and the archival footage and it's yeah. amazing. Great oh, show. I can't wait to see it. I want it to do well. Please. Please. And uh, I'll see you in uh see you in Colorado. Colorado. Red Thank Rocks. Thank you so much. Fuck yeah. Bert and Tom. Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.